Hey guys, welcome back to the unboxing dito. As you guys may know, one of the reasons kung bakit sikat si Xiaomi dito sa atin is because panalo siya pagdating sa value for money. And because of this, sobrang dami nilang loyal fans dito sa atin and even worldwide. Kaya nga kahit last year pa yung release ng Mi 10T series, it always comes up pa rin kapag napag-uusapan kung ano ba yung pinakasulit na phone. Alam ko marami sa inyo yung alam na to, pero for the benefit of those who don't, Redmi is a sub-brand of Xiaomi. And this month, nag si Redmi ng K40 series nila. Flagship level na yung specs niya pero very affordable pa rin. In this comparison video, we are going to figure out two things. Yung una is kung bibili ka ng phone today, alin ba sa dalawa yung pipiliin mo? Pangalawa is kung meron ka ng Mi 10T, worth it ba na mag-upgrade kay K40? Let's find out in our Mi 10T versus the Redmi K40 comparison video and gaming review. <music> My channel provides unboxing and reviews of all the hottest phones available today. So if you're new here, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you won't miss out each time I upload on a bagong video. So after all that, let's proceed with the gaming review. So habang pinag-uusapan natin yung mga pinagkaiba nila, we are going to play 6 of the hottest games today. Para syempre makita nyo na rin yung gaming performance ng dalawang phone. Yung unang game natin is a first person shooter game which is Call of Duty Mobile. And unahin natin gamitin si Mi 10T. Sa Call of Duty with our Mi 10T, eto naman yung mga settings. Nilaunch si Mi 10T last October 16, 2020. And I remember na sobrang na-hype tong series na to kasi may free scooter siya kapag nauna kang nagka-pre-order. If I'm not mistaken, taken worth 14,000 din yun. I was there no release day and believe me, sobrang daming tao. Well, hindi lang naman dahil sa scooter siya pinilahan. This phone is a true flagship killer kasi yung 8128GB variant niya cost only 21,000. Si Redmi K40 naman, inirelease siya sa China no March 4 of this year. Yung 8128 variant niya also costs 21,000 which is the same as Army 10T. Parehong may Pro variant yung dalawang series. May Pro Plus pa nga si K40 pero soon to be released pa lang siya. As of now, China exclusive device pa lang si Redmi K40 kaya wala pa siya sa mga official stores dito. Pero if you're looking to buy one, may mga local resellers naman dito. Sa mga nagtatanong nga pala, I got mine from AHA Xiaomi Manila. Since China exclusive si K40, naka CN ROM siya which means wala siyang Play Store and other Google Apps pre-installed. Pero don't worry kasi I did a tutorial about this on my last video. Ililink ko na lang sa description box para mapanood nyo. In terms of design, pareho silang glass back pero we could say na mas premium tingnan si Mi 10T kasi aluminum yung sides niya. Yung K40 kasi plastic yung sides. Yung iba kasi mas prefer nila yung aluminum pero hindi naman big deal for me kasi lagi naman ako nakakase. Dahil din sa glass yung likod, smudge and fingerprint magnet sila pareho. Lalo na with the color black. Check natin yung temperature ni Mi 10T natin. CPU temp is 39.4 and yung battery niya 43.7. Sa Call of Duty with our K40, eto naman yung mga settings. Yung selfie camera niya is located sa upper left which is ideal lalo na kapag magalaro ka kasi hindi siya nakakasagabal when you put it on landscape mode. Nasa gitna yung selfie cam ni Redmi K40 pero most of the time hindi ko naman siya pansin while gaming kasi sobrang liit lang niya. Well, another difference between them is their thickness. Si Mi 10T is about 9.3mm while yung Redmi K40 natin is around 7.8mm lang. It's not much pero pag finactor mo din yung camera protrusion and battery capacity all of those would add up sa overall weight nila. Kaya nga siguro mas mabigat ng 20 grams si Mi 10T at 216 grams. If you are going to play for about 30 to 40 minutes lang, malamang hindi mo naman masyadong mapansin yung weight difference nila. Pero after an hour or so, idagdag mo pa yung weight ng case mo, medyo nakahangawit siya. Siyempre mas comfortable pag mas magaan yung phone mo, lalo na kung matagal ka maglalaro. Pagkatapos ng tatlong team deathmatch games and isang battle royale, Check natin yung temperature. CPU temp is 47.8 and yung battery 42.5. Kung nabitin pa kayo sa bakbakan, here's another first person shooter game. Let's play PUBG Mobile. For PUBG, eto naman yung mga settings natin. For the graphics, we are set at Ultra HD. Naka Ultra naman tayo sa frame rate and naka on din yung other options like anti-aliasing and shadows. Both phones have dual stereo speakers which is really great kasi klarong klaro yung sound. You will find this very useful sa PUBG kasi yung mga footsteps na kalaban, pati movements, madidinig mong mabuti. Unfortunately nga lang, if preferred yung gumamit ng wired earphones when gaming, kailangan yung gumamit ng adapter kasi pareho silang walang 3.5mm port. May kasamang connector si Mi 10T out of the box, so that's good. 
Pero walang included kay K40 which is a bummer. Okay, after the game, let's check yung temperature. Okay, yung CPU temp is 38.2 and yung battery 40.5. Okay, so now si K40 naman yung gamitin natin. Okay, for PUBG Mobile using our Redmi K40, eto yung mga settings natin. For the graphics, we're going to use Ultra HD and sa frame rate, naka-ultra din tayo. Naka-on din yung other options like anti-aliasing and shadows. Sa PUBG as well as any other FPS games, malaking factor yung reaction time mo sa outcome ng game. Kaya dyan papasok yung tinatawag nilang touch sampling rate or in layman's term, eto yung speed ng pag-react ng phone mo the moment na lumapat yung daliri mo sa screen. Si Mi 10T has a 180Hz touch sampling rate which was great in 2020 standards. Halos pang gaming phone na yun to be fair. Pero dinoble yun ni K40 kasi 360Hz yung kanya. To be honest, for normal users, hindi mo na siya mapapansin masyado pero kung mahilig ka sa FPS games like COD, ramdam mo yung difference. Okay, after a classic game sa PUBG, let's check yung temperature. CPU temp is 45.9 and yung battery 40.5. Kita nyo naman siguro yung mga malajanwik na galawa natin sa PUBG and CODM. Well, pagkatapos nun, let's play a game na I think would highlight yung difference nila in terms of display quality. Sa Asphalt 9 with our Mi 10T, eto yung mga settings natin. In terms of screen size and resolution, pareho silang merong 6.67 inch panel na may 1080 by 2400 pixel resolution with a 20 is to 9 aspect ratio. Average lang yung bezel size nilang dalawa in today's standards. Mas maliit lang ng konti yung chin ni K40 compared kay Mi 10T. Kaya when you're playing a game like Asphalt 9, full screen experience na yung makukuha mo. In terms of screen refresh rate, Mi 10T has a 144Hz adaptive sync display. Which means yung refresh rate niya, nag adjust depende sa ginagawa mo. For example, 144Hz siya when you're browsing Instagram or Facebook posts. Pero pag nag-stop ka, after a few seconds, the phone will adjust the refresh rate automatically to about 60Hz para mabawasan yung battery consumption. Clearly sa aspect na to, nakakalamang siya kay K40 kasi bukod sa hindi adaptive yung refresh rate niya, 120Hz lang din yung maximum. Okay, after 4 races, check natin yung temperature ni Mi 10T. CPU temp 36.6 and yung battery 39.2. Okay, para naman sa Redmi K40, eto yung mga settings natin. Mi 10T is using a top grade IPS LCD panel. And to be fair, pag kinumpare mo siya sa display ng entry-level or mid-range phones, makikita mo talaga yung pinagkaiba ng quality nila dahil pareho silang LCD. Pero when it comes to media consumption, particularly sa gaming, panalo pa rin si K40 kasi AMOLED trumps LCD. Sa AMOLED screens kasi mas saturated yung mga colors, kaya mas vibrant and lively yung images. Parang mas nakahaga na maglaro lalo na with games like Asphalt 9. Yung color effects pag nagnanitro ka, yung collision animations, lahat buhay na buhay pati yung color ng mismong kotse mo. I mean, this is next level Samsung E4 display kaya hindi na nakahagulat na kahit top grade LCD hindi makakasabay pagdating sa display quality. After 4 races, check natin yung temperature ni K40. CPU temp is 44 degrees and yung battery 39.2. O tama na muna, nakarami na tayo ng tigas sa MMDA. Dami na natin nasira. Okay, Next, laruin natin si League of Legends Wild Rift. For League of Legends Wild Rift, eto naman yung mga settings natin. Both Mi 10T and si K40 comes with a 33 watt Xiaomi fast charger and same lang naman yung charging time nila. Parehong about 1 hour and 5 minutes bago sila mapuno. For me, impressive na yun kasi yung ibang phones na na-review ko, 50 watt pa nga yung charging speed pero halos same lang yung oras bago sila nag-full charge. It goes to show lang na hindi porket mataas yung charging speed na advertised, mas mabilis na siya. Check nyo pa din yung mga actual charging test ng mga tech reviewers. Sa battery capacity, mas lamang si Mi 10T kasi 5,000 MAH na siya. Compared kay K40 na 4520 MAH lang. Yung 400 plus MAH na pinagkaiba nila means an extra 30 to 40 minutes extra game time for you. Kaya it is something you have to consider. Okay, after 2 games, check natin yung temperature ni Mi 10T. CPU temp is 38.3 and yung battery 40.5. Okay, ngayon naman si Redmi K40. For Wild Drift, eto yung mga settings natin. In terms of connectivity, future-proof na silang dalawa kasi pareho silang 5G capable. Actually, 5G is currently on its very early stages pa lang dito sa atin. A few cities like Makati and VGC pa lang ang meron, pero it's definitely a plus pa din kung 5G ready na yung phone mo. Both phones have Wi-Fi 6 connectivity and with MOBA games like Wild Rift, kailangan nyo ng stable connection para hindi masira yung laro mo. In some cases, sa gitna ng clash, bigla na lang hindi gagalaw yung champion mo kasi either red ping ka na or disconnected ka na completely. So far, very smooth yung experience ko sa kanilang dalawa. Even in team fights, walang delays or connectivity issues. 
Pagkatapos ng 2 games, check natin yung temperature ni K40. CPU temp 45.9, yung battery 40.7 degrees. So far, naging stable naman yung connection natin sa Wild Rift. Ngayon, let's see if they can maintain that sa Mobile Legends. Sa Mobile Legends with our Mi 10T, eto yung mga settings natin. A huge advantage of having a 5-month-old device is that the software has already been optimized. Dahil mas matagal na yung phone mo, mas nare-recognize na siya ng mga game developers. Which means, lahat ng mga updates like sa case natin dito sa ML, may ultra settings na for the graphics. At like kay Redmi K40 na high pa lang yung available na option. Sa software, our Mi 10 T comes with Android 10 out of the box while naka Android 11 naman agad yung K40 natin. I got a notification na meron ng update for my Mi 10T to go to Android 11. Pero hindi pa ako nag update kasi I've seen other users complaining about bugs kaya I might not update for now. Pareho silang may game turbo feature that lets you manage your notifications and incoming calls para hindi ka maabala when you're gaming. You can even clear your RAM and pwede nyo enclose yung mga background running apps para ma-boost yung gaming performance nyo. It's really a great feature to have kasi dati sa mga gaming phones lang yan meron Okay, pagkatapos ng dalawang game, check natin yung temperature ni Mi 10T. CPU temp 38.3 degrees and yung battery 40 degrees. Sa Redmi K40 naman, eto yung mga settings natin. Same sa experience natin sa Wild Rift, wala tayong naging connectivity problems and very stable din yung ping. Mostly green yung ping. And if ever mag-yellow, hindi naman ako naka-experience ng lag. Yung isang laro sa ML, mga 3 to 4% ng battery yung nakoconsume kapag naka 70% screen brightness ako. Pero depende pa rin sa magiging haba ng game. Ko, which is excellent even in today's standards. So, kahit 5 to 6 games straight yung laruin mo, hindi masyadong madidrain yung battery mo. Mas vivid din yung colors ng skill animations thanks to the E4 AMOLED screen ni K40. Mas may enjoy mo talaga yung game mo kapag ganito kaganda yung screen mo. Lastly, okay din yung haptics and touch response. And wala din ako napansin delays all throughout the game. Okay, after 2 games, check natin yung temperature. CPU temp is 48.2 and yung battery 39.2. Okay, kita nyo naman, nakarami na naman si Boy KS. To top things off, let's push them both sa mga limits nila. Let's play Genshin Impact. Sa Genshin Impact with our Mi 10T, eto naman yung mga settings natin. Sa Genshin Impact, halos lahat ng phones, even flagships, napapalaban talaga yung processor dahil mataas yung requirement niya. Si Mi 10T is equipped with last year's flagship chip na si Snapdragon 865. While si K40 naman, nasa Snapdragon 870. Very similar yung dalawang chipset na yan sa isa't isa. Actually, yung tawag na nga ng iba sa Snapdragon 870 ay Snapdragon 865. Plus. Pareho kasi silang fabricated in a 7nm process node. Pati yung GPU, both Adreno 650 yung ginamit. Kahit yung speed ng cores nila, almost identical. Maliban sa main core ni K40 that runs 3.2 GHz compared kay Mi 10T na 2.84 GHz lang. Overall, pag sa benchmark mo tinignan yung dalawang chipset, lamang lang ng 30 to 40K si K40 sa Antutu. Kaya in all honesty, kung meron ka ng Mi 10T, it's not that much of an upgrade pagating sa performance. Okay, after playing for 30 minutes on maximum settings, check natin yung temperature ni Mi 10T. Yung CPU temp is 39.1 and yung battery is 43.5. Okay, sa so Genshin Impact with our Redmi K40, eto naman yung mga settings. Habang gamit ko yung K40, napansin ko na may mga occasional stutters and frame drops. But I think this is related to software optimization as I've mentioned earlier. Yung overall thermal management is decent but not the best sa mga na-review ko. Mas mainit yung pakiramdam niya sa kamay compared nung Mi 10T yung gamit ko. Nagustuhan ko din yung placement ng volume rockers ni K40 na nasa taas kapag naka-landscape mode ka. Mas madali kasi siya pindutin. Kaya hindi siya mahirap abutin ng kamay if ever na kailangan yung i-adjust yung volume nyo throughout the game. Pagkatapos ng 30 minutes on max settings, check natin yung temperature. So our CPU temperature is 53.2 and yung battery 41 degrees. Guys, before we conclude this video, ipakita ko lang sa inyo yung package that I got from Nutri Manila. This is called the Copper 95 mask. And what you get inside is 10 pieces of replacement filter and syempre yung mask natin that also comes with a plastic case and what's great about this besides yung 5 layers of protection nya is super comfortable syang gamitin kasi pag hindi comfortable yung ginagamit mong mask tendency is tanggalin mo sya and with the recent spike ng number of cases we should always wear our masks 
and be safe. Isa pang nagustuhan ko sa kanya is adjustable yung earlobes niya. So it would fit a wider range of sizes. I'll leave a link na lang sa description box so you'd know how and where to order. So here are my final thoughts on this comparison and gaming review. In terms of performance, hindi naman sila nagkakalayo. Actually, if we look at the benchmark, 30 to 40k lang yung agwat nila, which is very minimal for me. In real world use, to be honest, hindi mo na mapapansin yan. To summarize, yung advantage ni Mi 10T would be availability, a slightly better camera, and software optimization. On the other hand, mas upgraded yung processor ni K40. Mas better din yung schematic design niya. And syempre, yung E4 AMOLED display. Personally, I think that both phones, even in today's standards, would give you great value for your money. So, depende na lang talaga kung alin sa mga advantages nila yung mas preferred mo. Pero, either way, you really can't go wrong kasi both phones are really excellent. If you have questions and suggestions for our next video, hit me up in the comments down below and I'll make sure to reply. So that's the end of our video and I hope you guys liked it. Thumbs is a plus, thumbs is a must. I'm Dan Maxing Tito and I will see you next time.